Hello there, cosmonauts, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program Nova Star International. And in this episode, we are going to be doing some contracts, and this is all going to be done in post commentary. Now, as you can see, I went along to the runway here to do a little bit of science because, if you remember correctly from earlier on in the series, I did mention that the separate areas of the Kerbal Space Center are actually different biomes and one place that we haven't done any science from already is the runway and if you have a quick look we'll recover Jebediah here and he will get 2.4 science from his EVA on the runway and then if we go and recover the craft from the space center or the uh, tracking station rather we can get a little bit more science from that as well another 12 in fact just from doing our materials study now, the next thing on the list that we needed to test was the Poodle engine, the Rockamax Poodle engine. And we literally just have to launch this thing. It's as simple as that. It was a contract to uh, test the engine from the launch pad. 27 science reward is certainly worth it. And, I mean, this is a really easy test, a successful launch, a quick landing. And, I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that to get a little bit of science. Now, this is all being done to basically increase our science as much as possible in this episode. We just want to make sure that we can get enough science so that we can start branching out and doing bigger and better things. Without those bigger parts, those two and a half meter parts, we can't really do all that much. So we'll recover that one. We're not going to get too much science from recovering the vessel, but we will get the science from doing the contract. We're up to 88.8 .8 now and we can move on to the next one. Now, in this one, we need to test out a new engine, I do believe, and that is hooked up to... Uh, oh, wait, no, 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 sorry, my bad. This is actually a mission to, to Minmus, believe it or not. Yeah, um, I kind of done, I've done things in a little bit of a strange order here, but I decided that we're going to use our basically Nova Star Mun Explorer, which we used in the previous episode to visit the Mun, and actually go and visit Minmus with it. Now... You guys might be thinking, well, hmm, you only just made it to the moon last time, and you know, we did, it was quite close, but we had enough fuel left that we were able to get back safely, and I figured if we can get a good interception with Minimus, then we could make it there and back again with Jebediah and get a whole lot of science from it. So I just wanted to kind of detail this mission as quickly as possible here. We are launch off with our two SRBs as usual, the standard LV-15 engine, I believe, at the bottom bottom there and we'll uh, pitch ourselves to the right as we reach about 9,000 meters to basically do a very standard low curb in orbit transfer. Um, I think everything went really smoothly in fact with this launch and we'll skip now in just a second uh, as we kind of widen out our trajectory and, and go into orbit in just a moment's time. So this is basically the three-stage rocket that we used to get to the moon, like I said last time. We've got the two SRBs that we launched up with, our main liquid fuel tank, and then the separation of that to the third stage, which is our little little gas burner stove there. You can barbecue, uh, uh, you know, barbecue some piece of meat on it. It's that crap, but it does the job, and it will get us into, well, a bit of a botched Kerbal orbit. You'll see that I actually let the apoapsis rise quite high, and struggle to get the, the periapsis up here. I want to get that above 70,000, ideally, and it starts to go a little bit wrong, but... We should be able to get ourselves a little bit of a nice um, interception with Minmus here. Just have to make sure the curb in periapsis is above 70,000, otherwise we're going to start re-entering again, which is obviously no good for anybody. But uh, yeah, we're going to take Jebediah to Minmus and get ourselves a bunch of science just from being in the sphere of influence of the tiny, tiny little moon. So first of all, to get to Minmus, we have to take an extra step than we would if we go to the Moon. Now, Minmus is not in the same plane as the Moon and Kerbin. Now, the the Moon rotates in a very you know in the same plane. It basically means that the uh, the Kerbin rotates along its axis and the Moon rotates around that plane as well. So when you go to the Moon, you don't have to go off at any funny angles. However, Minmus is tilted slightly. It's tilted by six degrees from what we are currently um, orbiting Kerbin at. And if you have a look here, we'll quickly fast forward to our descending node, and then we will burn to the normal, which is the triangle here on the nav ball, to basically make our, um, our orbit 
come to a different angle. And that, that way, we'll get an easier interception with Minmus itself. As uh, doing it normally, you can end up missing the planet by quite, or the moon even, by quite a way. So we've kind of, you know, matched our descending nodes, our inclination, our orbital inclination is what it's called. And then we'll bring our um, marker up here, our prograde marker. So you can see that we need to burn 922 meters per second, roughly, to get out to Minmus here. And that's really not a lot. If you remember when we went to the moon, we only needed to burn about 800 and something meters per second. So it's only 100 meters per second extra to go all of that extra distance. And you can see here, I'm just trying to get this maneuver node into position. And those two little markers at the top where the um, where our orbit will intercept the orbit of Minmus, you can see, which I'm just trying to ch change it slightly so that these markers actually get very close together. And there we get an interception. Now, we're not worried too much about getting an interception that's very low. We're not trying to orbit Minmus here. We just want to go into its sphere of influence. And we've got a really nice interception here. Not only is the um, maneuver node just one minute away, um, but we also get a return trajectory to Kerbin with a pretty low periapsis. So we should be able to have to spend very small amounts of fuel in order to return. And that's the main thing here, making sure that we don't have to spend bucket loads of fuel to get back because we don't have bucket loads of fuel to spend. So we're just going to burn here to our maneuver node and we'll widen out our, uh, our well, not widen out our orbit or just extend our orbit out towards Minmus and you can see that our fuel here less than half already and we we're only just over halfway on the burn so we're going to have very little fuel to get back with and uh, well Jebediah's excited it's like he's about to do some fist pumps in the bottom right there he's like yeah come on let's go America <laughs> but um well I, I guess Kerbin's on uh, Kerbal's on like that but uh, hey we're gonna just get an interception with the moon there you noticed and then we extend out there's our interception with Minmus we'll close off the maneuver node and uh, I mean that's bringing us back at 260,000 meters above Kerbin's uh, surface which is really good but if you if I zoom out here you can see how the planes are tilted slightly between Minmus and the moon and well fast forward time and we arrive into the sphere of influence of Minmus. Mystery Goo observation, the goo sticks to the Minmus side of the container. It appears to be attracted by the tiny moon. We do a materials bay observation, of course, as well. The samples react to the lack of an atmosphere. Of course, there is no atmosphere on Minmus. Uh, similar to the moon, there is no atmosphere on it. And we'll do a quick crew report. And we, the, the radio fails to transmit when set to the off position. Well, aren't the Kerbals the brightest tools in the box? So the periapsis over Mimus here, just um, 270,000. I, I warp to it just in case it's low enough to get some low Minmus science. But uh, I don't think we managed to get any low Minmus science here. And I didn't want to risk lowering our periapsis any further because we've got so little fuel left it might have messed up our return trajectory we might have had Jebediah stranded out here so gonna do a quick mystery gear observation again and we'll find that yeah we're not going to get any extra science from this we're still high over Minmus. And, I mean, that's all we can really do at this point in time. We can't EVA our astronauts out because we haven't upgraded our astronaut complex, but that's certainly something we could consider doing. And we've not got tons of science machines that we can take up there as well. So, I mean, the real science from Minmus and the Mun are going to come when we actually land on them with a Kerbal and we actually do some exploration of the surface because each moon has a ton of different biomes, similar to Kerbin, and you can get science from each of those biomes. So it's worth um, bearing in mind that we will have to visit these planets in a lot of depth, or these moons, sorry, in a lot of depth a little bit later on. But for now, we just want to do some flybys, get some information um, as we fly past, and then using that information, we can upgrade our... Um, our parts we can upgrade um, what parts we have access to and uh, hopefully come back later on with bigger and better missions so i'm just waiting to change the sphere of influence and get back into a curve in orbit we're still apparently under the uh, under minimus's sphere of influence which is a little bit of annoying 
and uh, this is something that could be really kind of worked on a little bit. It gets a little bit fuzzy <laughs> um, when you're changing sphere of influences. But there's our return trajectory, 250 meters above the surface of Kerbin. We're going to burn retrograde here to, to basically lower our periapsis and bring that to about 37,000 meters to hopefully be captured by Kerbin and brought back to the surface. So warping to the periapsis, it's a pretty short mission really. Not a huge amount of danger here for Jeb, which is good. I don't want to risk losing our star pilot and uh, on the way back we obviously are going to now start burning up in the atmosphere things a little jittery at that uh, massive uh, massive time warp and yeah I mean we had a little bit of fuel left maybe we could have got away with uh, going lower over Minmus's surface but as I say I would rather play a little bit less riskily than anything else so we're coming in to hit the periapsis here we'll stop burning up and um, I think Everything will go fairly smoothly from this point onwards. Obviously, the most dangerous part of the mission is re-entry. But in Kerbal Space, what? <laughs> in Kerbal Space Program, even, that's not necessarily the case. You don't really have to deal with heat shields or anything like that. And there is a mod, I think I might have mentioned this in the past, actually, called Deadly Re-entry. And Deadly Re-entry effectively... Um, well, makes re-entry deadly. The clue is much in the name with that one. Um, the deadliness of the re-entry basically means that if you don't put a heat shield on your spacecraft, you will burn up. And that's something that doesn't happen in the base game. Something that, you know, if you guys want me to put that on, I would certainly relish that challenge. So anyway, down we come, and we're going pretty fast. 2,000 kilometers, uh, uh, sorry, meters per second even. 2,000 kilometers, my goodness, that's even faster. It's uh, blazing fast. But that's enough to burn up in the atmosphere. And there's the Kerbal Space Center below us at 50 kilometers away. And it looks like we are destined to splash down in the ocean, which is certainly not... Uh, going to be a problem we won't be too far away from the Kerbal Space Center and uh, that's all good and as we come down here we're burning up as usual and ready to basically make a routine landing now one thing I did kind of realize at this point is oh actually we don't have our two radial mount parachutes on and we only have the one chute which is now deployed and gonna slow us down obviously but we have got the science junior, we've got two goo canisters, we've got an engine and a fuel tank as well as the command pod and the hefty Jebediah who's a little bit overweight from all those snacks. And I'm a little bit concerned that our, um, our speed hitting the water is going to be a little bit high. If we time warp up here we'll see that as the parachute deploys... We're only going to be slowed down to 9.8 meters per second. It's not a super fast landing but nine meters a second is pretty damn fast that's about as fast as well that's that's a little slower just a little slower than Usain Bolt running the 100 meters uh, he does that in less than 10 seconds I believe it's nine point something seconds but we splash down and what happened there well everything just disintegrated and we lost our science junior and I was like for god's sake all of that and we lost the the most science in that vessel which was from the science junior and after that massive mission going to well it wasn't that massive but after that mission we only got 12 and a half science from that and that was really quite a shame I was really annoyed but Jebediah did get three experience which is certainly something to be gained and we're going to go ahead and unlock ourselves uh, some new parts uh, i decided i think to go with this one the advanced construction or maybe not i think it was advanced flight control in fact because i kind of like the idea of getting the rcs thrusters and the sas module now at the moment going for remote um you know drones and stuff uh, going for remote controlled aircraft it's going to be or spacecraft it's going to be quite difficult really um because we are limited in the number of parts we have we are going to have to put up communication satellites as we're using remote tech so it's much easier and uh, better at the moment to actually send out manned missions but uh, I think I was a little bit indecisive at this point. I am so indecisive normally when it comes to choosing what technology to unlock next. It's always a tough one. But advanced flight control here, 
I think, going to win it over for me. As uh, the idea of getting the RCS is nice, and obviously that SAS module as well. But still, clicking around, uh, the two hot thermometer would have been a nice choice because that would have given us a little more science. Advanced construction would allow us to prepare ourselves for the heavier rocketry stuff. But ultimately, you're going to need pretty much everything in these nodes anyway. And I went for advanced flight control. Maybe that wasn't the right thing to do, but um, it doesn't matter too much. So back to mission control. We've got a bunch of contracts here. We can have a maximum of seven now. And unfortunately, a lot of these are a little bit out of our reach. The LV-1 liquid fuel engine though um that gives us 60 science for completing that and 500 reputation so i'm just going to accept it because that is that lv1 is a tiny tiny engine and that's not going to be a problem to test at all uh, also going there for the separatron landed at kerbin so that's going to be so so simple to do so we'll hop into the vab and uh, we hardly have to tweak a vessel here. We'll load up the... Uh, oh, wait, no, I, we actually create a new one. I was going to say we can load up the um, Nova Star 8 because that one has everything we need. That's the LV-1 there, that tiny, tiny little engine with four thrust. It's absolutely pathetic. I don't know why anyone would want to use that thing. But um, there's no point building a one from scratch. We can load up the Nova Star 8. We know that can get us into a suborbital trajectory, which is what we need. And then we just need to tweak it a little bit. And, uh, well, the first thing we're going to want to tweak is the new engine. And we can do that very simply by removing the old one and putting the new one on. Fortunately, we've got tweak style and uh, tweak scale, tweak scale enabled, which is going to make that engine fit on there. And when I put this back on, I was like, okay, uh, there's no cover. There's no engine cover. What's going on? Why, where is the engine cover? Let's try and scale it up. And then it's way too big. I was just confused. Um, and I was thinking, well, is this going to work? We, we put the detachment thing, the stack decoupler there, and it's not actually attached to anything, physically attached to anything. And uh, that is actually floating in midair but hey we'll see if it works um we'll find out i guess when it when it gets to it so then we just attach these separatrons to the outside of our little srbs at the start and we can test that right from the start there the nova star 8 slightly modified to test two new parts and uh, that should be all good we simply need to launch it and make sure that those separatrons are in the launch stage so that when we actually launch the craft, the separatrons will fire and we'll get our contract complete. Now, we don't get a lot of science from it, but eight science is better than no science and contract complete already. The separatrons there give us a small little boost up and off we go. But it looks so ridiculous, that piddly piddly little engine and it's not even connected to anything so six science of full reputation it was a tiny little reward but it was worth doing because we had no problems doing that at all srb detachment and we'll throttle up a little bit with our maverick until we get up to um well, not escape velocity, but up to suborbital trajectory of 79,000 meters and higher. Uh, that is enough. That's all we need. And then, bam, out of nowhere, out of absolutely nowhere, the uh, first stage decides to collide with the top part of the rocket. I didn't actually see that coming. I thought, you know what, I'll drop that off. It'll be fine. Uh, it turns out I was very wrong, and we had to fire our engine there to give us a little bit of a boost. Now... We, we aren't actually set to go high enough at the moment. Our apoaps is 80,000. We had to use our engine there to give us a little bit of a boost anyway. And once we get up to 79,000 meters, we can run the test, complete the contract, and uh, reap the rewards of the science. But I, I thought that launch was just ridiculous, how the, uh, how the engine wasn't even connected, and then how once we ditched that first stage, just out of nowhere, it was like, whoop, I'm here again. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, tested the LV-1 at um, suborbital trajectory at 78,060 science for that and uh, I believe a safe landing as well um, like I say these launches do get a little tedious after a while but they're so necessary we have to build a nice foundation of money and science before we can start doing um, you know the bigger and better things which we will eventually get to uh, before long so we landed that one down we'll recover the vessel and we're not going to get any science from this but we did get the science from doing the mission. So we're back up to 77 and a half now. And we can do yet another contract to push us up to 90. So that we can unlock the large 
rocketry stuff. And once we've got that, that's going to pave the way for the future episodes where we are going to be able to do a lot more. So we want to test the Rocker Max 2477. I think this is a radial mounted engine and I'm just checking what else there is in this list. A lot of this stuff is going to be quite difficult to do at the moment. And, and these ones, they've only got one star in difficulty, but I mean, the, the amount of stuff we need to actually do those things is that way out of our realms of possibility at the moment. So once again, we've got a modified Nova Star 8, the uh, vessel that we used in the previous launch to test our little uh, LV-1 engine. This time, we're going to be testing those Rockomax radial mounted engines, and the reward for this will once again be 60 science. So it's a really good reward. Pretty standard procedure launch. SRBs detach throttle up get up to orbit this time and uh, well we're using our little gas burner our little uh, stove once more so we're up to 86,000 meters I bought our apoapsis a little bit higher this time and all we have to do now is get into orbit and orbital ve well not orbital velocity but um it classes as an orbit as soon as the periapsis rises above the horizon you don't actually have to orbit you know all the way around without touching the atmosphere so this is a really easy one to do we run the test grab the uh grab the completion for that and uh our periapsis here well we brought it up a little bit higher than necessary so what we're going to have to do is turn uh, pr uh, retrograde and then fire our edges again um to basically bring our periapsis down so that we hit the atmosphere. I was actually worried we wouldn't have enough fuel to do this because we really don't have a lot, but it doesn't take much at this uh, at this kind of altitude to lower ourselves down. So we have a tiny, teeny tiny amount of fuel left, but we completed the contract, 67,000 funds, and that's really important because if you guys remember in the last episode, we had to upgrade so many of our buildings that our funds were absolutely destroyed by the end of that episode. So these little launches, these little contracts, not only are they gaining us science, but they're gaining us some more funds, which is definitely going to be necessary um, for getting up a space station. It's going to be costly. Getting up our communication satellites, which is going to be costly, and uh, just uh, you know, a, a higher difficulty from having these mods installed. So anyway, deploying the chutes, down we come uh, for a very soft landing at you know 4.7 meters per second safely landed we'll recover the vessel as we topple over there fortunately nothing exploded and we can return back to the kerbal space center for a total of 137.6 science which is certainly not bad and our funds certainly recovering now at 152,000. a quick hop into the r d department we'll get ourselves heavy rocketry and that will pave the way for future episodes so thank you very much for watching guys as usual i have been zach and I'll see you next time.